All right, Relic 1 is back in the fight, and since I have been busy getting a new flight stick instead of learning the Saber Please startup, I'm just going to let them start up Copy. the airplane for me. Now, this is going to be my first official mission on. with the new Thrustmaster uh, A-10 Warthog stick I got. I used the SciTech X-52 before then, so this is actually going to be very interesting indeed. Uh, our mission today is basically, since our Air Force is dwindling, we have been asked to fly top cover for um, a couple of helicopters out of Sukumi Air Base. And uh, these helicopters, uh, basically they are gonna do a search and rescue operation in that area. So, our job will be very simple. We are to turn on our radio, check that radio setting is uh, on channel 3, which is Sukumi. And, uh, Copy. yeah. We'll also set our IFF to low, and... Ground power is now off. That should do it. Now, I don't actually have uh, any pedals or anything, so this is actually going to be very interesting. And uh, my camera controls are going to be far more clunky than usual because they are not on the stick. I've actually used the uh, stick camera controls previously because they provided a much more fluid motion. In fact, my first experience fondling a... Uh, fondling a... Uh, a 10 stick was at a friend's house where he actually tried to convert the A10 stick for camera work. It didn't work, but um, that tells you a bit of how smooth the thumb options for the Warthog can actually be. I actually tried to buy it from him and I failed, and that is a that is more or less the reason why I have it today. And that is, it went it went on sale and uh, I decided that, hey, it's on sale, it's basically one third of the usual asking price. However, since I don't have any rudders, my current, my current way of... Um, of turning the aircraft while on the ground is absolute shit. I do not recommend this jury rig of a system to anyone. But let's head straight onto the runway and we are may need to adjust our heading a little bit on the there we go. Much better. Or not. More to that side please also, it helps if I do flaps and air brakes before takeoff. Uh, this has been a very sloppy takeoff so far, because I'm busy with my little jury rig pedal system. And I feel like I should get some pedals right goddamn now, instead of just messing about with buttons that have no play, no business. There we go, we got the flaps going, we got everything going alright. Uh, we are going to climb to a suitable altitude for top cover and head towards Sugumi. We are also going to switch to channel 2, which is the Sukumi channel. Uh, once on altitude, we are going to start the trimming process, make sure the aircraft is trimmed correctly. And once that is done, I'm actually going to cut a bit in the video and take you right to the action, or rather, right to the point where we meet up with the helicopters. So I'm gonna release the stick and we are going to trim the aircraft a lot more nose up.
There we go. Trim is now set for nose up. And we are going to reduce it a little bit so our height gain does not take us straight into a stall. Also, we can reduce our flaps there. Once the... Yeah, a little bit more upwards, please. Alright, we are approaching the airfield right now. In order to warm up the site, we can turn on the guns. And uh, the site should now be able to be configured. Now, let's see here. Checking the target distance and wingspan setting. Yeah, that looks good to me, at least. Hello there, Relic One. We see that you are 10 miles outside of Tsukumi. We are taking to the active runway, forming up, and then heading down to the AO. Thanks for the top cover today. Yeah, it's not really a choice. They didn't. They really did not have anyone else to send for this mission. Literally no one else. They had emptied the entire room, and then they were like, wait. Who can we send to give our valu four valuable Black Hawk helicopters top cover? I mean, if they're gonna send assets to recover pilots, which I can understand is something they might need to do, uh, especially if resources being scarce on both sides, then I would have to say that uh, they might actually consider dispatching better top cover. Then again, also I realize I should have switched on the outboard tanks too, but um, it's easy to forget such things. I make no no promise at all that this playthrough is going to be perfect in any way, and it's not going to be so. We'll assume whatever we'll, we'll be shooting at has a small target profile. We are currently at a quite respectable altitude. And uh, as the situation may warrant, we will remain on such an altitude. Once again, I have to say how much I just love this skin. I mean, this skin is beautiful. It does help that it reminds me of Sweden due to yellow and blue being Sweden's colors as well. But basically the wingtips and everything. We are flying over the large factory on the departure end of the runway. Altitude, 1500 feet. Yeah, we arrived over this area far quicker than the helicopter, so they have spotted a cargo ship in the region, that's very suspicious, but the helicopters are currently working above the factory level, and they have reported in that they seen a suspicious cargo ship, and I think that means that we should be reducing our altitude. Uh, we will actually engage our air brakes for this and uh, go lower and see what is going on.
Yeah, I got a visual on the cargo ship. We'll keep a rotating pattern downwards and uh, see if we can scare him off a bit. Wait, I got two other contacts in the sector. Uh, close, very close to that cargo ships. Uh, at least I think it was contacts. It might just have been blips on the waves. So once we we acquire the cargo ship, we are going to do a bit of a fly path, see if uh, what's going on with him. Yeah, there he is. What the hell was that? Oh well. So, we got visual on the cargo ship. And we'll see what the helicopters think we should do about him. We don't really carry any ordnance that can hurt that cargo ship either way. But I think we got two contacts closer to the coast, actually. I can also see what appears to be a rounded transport plane. Those look suspiciously like two very small boats. Let's have a look. Yeah, those are definitely smaller boats. I wonder if they are going to try and uh, interfere. We'll switch to the lower guns. And uh, let's see here. Make sure that everything's fine. The reason I'm picking just the upper guns uh, is because I'm not really confident in my ability to immediately destroy the target. So we will be, if we need to engage anything right now, then I can easily just switch the guns with my thumb here from upper guns to all guns and, and so on basically. I feel that is necessary uh, because I really want to be able to engage the enemy for a prolonged period of time. And if that means I'm less lethal with each hit, well, against stuff like small boats, that's not going to matter. It might matter if an A-10 or a Harrier or a Frogfoot or whatever shows up to ruin the party, but as long as those boats are the only opposition we might have to contend with, then just using two guns is going to do just fine. However, we do not have any clearance to engage yet. We can't prove that those are anything other than pleasure yachts, but I'm a bit worried because the helicopters are currently entering those boats' range. So, we might ha we are gonna have to keep a close watch on the situation. There are two small boats out there next to the coastline. They are not friendly. They've already taken some shots at us. Relic 1, take them out. If they stick around, they're going to make this recovery operation a difficult one. Leave that large ship out there alone. I can't confirm whether or not these two smaller patrol boats came from it. Copy, Commander. Yeah, that's... God damn it! I missed the guy. We had a solid approach, but sadly the solid approach was not enough. And uh, I think I just realized that I'm very used to using my rudder to do last minute compensations in attack patterns such as that one. And I just realized that if I'm gonna keep using the Wolfhog, I need to stick to my guns so to speak. Also at... Oh, wait, there he is. I think. No? God damn it. Trying to... F oh, we just got a few more holes in our wing. I completely lost track of those small boats, and we've, pay we've paid a price for it with 
a bunch of holes in my way. I'm gonna increase power to engines. And I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna not take my eyes off those fucking boats. Whereupon I immediately lost visual on the boats, of course. We have one boat straight ahead. I don't know if we got that one or not. I think we did. Yeah, confirm solid hit on target, I think. Uh, now all we need to do is find the second boat. And hope that our airplane survives all these holes in our wing. I think I can see the second boat over there. Yeah, I can see him. Let's learn to stick to this firing run. Commit to the run. I don't know if we got him. By all rights we should... No, we did not get the target. I say again, target is still active. And at this point in time, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the ammunition counter in my top magazine. Uh, I don't want to commit to a run and then realize that, hey, fuck, I'm out of ammunition. There we got you, and... God damn it. Well, there's one good thing about all this. If those boats are firing at me, they're not firing at the search and rescue crew. However, that may change once they realize I can't hit those fuckers. Either way, this is also... This is a really... The I lost visual on oh there he is. I think that must have gotten the guy. God damn it! Trying to hit these boats is very frustrating. Checked guns ammunition level, it shows I mean it's just embarrassing at this point. Okay, the helicopters have entered the effective range of those boats. That boat needs to die. That boat needs to die now. Lost visual on the guy, but at least he's firing on me and uh, does not fire at uh, the helicopters so far. I mean, it's so diff. The reason I'm using the external view is because in the cockpit view, losing sight of that target is a very easy thing to do. There we have the guy, and let's aim up for him. Oh, we went really low there. And we still didn't get the guy. God damn it. This is very frustrating indeed. Especially since we, I would say, at least rather quickly got the first one. So, that this one takes more time is very annoying. Also, thank you for keeping shooting at me, and I actually mean that. Because as long as that guy is shooting at me, I can see him. But at this, god damn it! I got so many near misses on that, on those boats. But at least I have enough ammunition to make it count. Alright, so there you are. No joy, we did not hit the target. I don't think it... Uh, I'm fairly certain that some of the commenters now are gonna say, oh, but you're hitting the target, you're not doing enough damage to it. Uh, I wouldn't... F I actually do not think that. I am honestly confident that 
this is me missing the targets. There's the boat. And the reason I think that is because the first salvo... Yeah, now my top guns are dry. But I think we got him. Looks like the threat has been cleared. We're headed in for the recovery now. Alright, let's switch to the middle guns. Middle guns are active. Check fuel status. Fuel status is fine due to the external tanks that we never had to drop. If that cargo ship is uh, launching more small boats, I am going to strafe it. We'll see what else they might cook up for us. Also, my trim is really off. Uh, right now, nose, nose down seems to be all the rage today, so we are going to try and make sure the trim is slightly better. New stick and my latest module is not really the best mix, but at least the game doesn't crash, because I've played this mission two or three times now, and uh, every time I managed to hit one of the boats, it was an instant crash to desktop. And uh, at least now, I don't seem to have to worry about that one. I think the new NVIDIA driver fixed that one. So we're gonna look on the helicopters as they perform their solemn duty of recovering our crew. And we'll see if they have more targets for us. Let's keep doing a show of force flyovers against that cargo ship. Bit of a warning shot as well, just in case they launch the boats and need a reminder what will happen if they send more boats against our helicopters. The helicopter seems to be safely on their way back at the very least, so... Roger that, we will be heading back towards Sochi. And once again I'm going to do a rough cut here just so you guys don't have to sit through the entire boring flyover there. So see you at Sochi! Uh, this is very bad, we are out of fuel. I can't tell you how that happened. Oh, there we go. Fuel quantities now. I can tell you exactly how that happened. Uh, apparently, I had selected the wrong pylons for the um, for the fuel tanks. So, w when I was flying, I was like, yeah, the fuel tanks are probably draining my fuel. That was wrong. Instead, I was flying on internal tanks only. Now, I'm gonna say that even if the fuel had actually been gone, it wouldn't have been a catastrophe, 
because we would have Tsukumi well within gliding distance, but I would prefer not to do that way. So we got plenty of fuel left, and the problem is that those fuel, that fuel is now in our extra tanks. So instead of the internal tanks, where they should be, uh, they're now in our reserve tanks. Now, I'm pretty sure the quartermaster at Sochi is going to be very happy to realize that we are bringing the precious tanks back instead of just, you know, dropping them in the ocean. And we have arrived at Sochi Adler, the airbase you see down there. We are at a little bit high altitude right now, so we are going to hail the ATC and we're going to request inbound. Sochi, forward, one, one, inbound. Copy that, runway 06, copy that. Let's hope this landing goes better than the last one. Even if it doesn't, then I can at least blame the proceedings on the aircraft being damaged. But I would not like to have excuses for such a thing. So instead we are simply going to um, do a bit of a turnaround here. Extend our air brakes, trying to get our speed down. Uh, flaps is also a very good thing to have right now, so I'm gonna extend those as well. And all in all, this looks to be another catastrophe of a landing. Save for the fact that at least now we got fuel. do a tighter turn into the runway in question just so everyone watching this will be horrified by the maneuver I'm pulling with air brakes out and no HUD support for that matter. Uh, nose wheel problems. I say again we got nose wheel problems. Uh, nose wheel does not seem to extend all the way. Uh, rather, it has extended all the way, but it seems to be bent in an unusual angle. Uh, this is not a good thing, I might add. But it's better than not having a... Oh, wait. God damn it, nose wheel has now retracted into the flight body. Is every single landing going to be like this? Because I, I don't know why the nose wheel acts in this manner. Am I extending it at too high speeds or what's going on? Because I have no idea why the nose wheel in my previous landing I had this problem as well with the nose wheel refusing to... Yeah, my gear are currently... My uh, landing gear are refusing to do any work right now. They're stuck. Same with flaps. Flaps are stuck. Um, I would like to blame the uh, combat damage, but I'm fairly certain... Alright, so let's try and save this one. You know, the landing gear thing really bothers me now because that approach was actually not bad. Had we just had a landing gear, I would say that our situation right now would be pretty good. Still is, because uh, those tanks 
that are filled with a lot of flammable fuel is currently taking much yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't think taxiing to the parking area is going to be possible right now. Really sorry about that, but... Road 1, as you're clearing the active runway, taxi to the main ramp and park to the east of the TU-22. There's a soldier there to marshal you in your spot. Move smoke takes the area as well. Um, Sochi, can I get a rain check on that? Maybe even get a tow he out here? Because, you know, this airplane is not going anywhere fast, just stating the facts here.